Hey guys, Aileen here from Homegrown Happiness. So we've been in lockdown for just over a week now. Um, and it's not too bad actually because I have this space to go in and I'm doing heaps of gardening which is totally keeping me sane. So this video is going to be a bit of a walk through my autumn garden, especially focused on this top garden and what I am doing to prep it for winter. Um, but before we start, I wanted to show you another little garden that I've just made for my neighbours. So when the lockdown was announced, they were like, oh, we should have really put a vegetable garden in um, by now because it would be cool to have something to be able to harvest from and yeah, be a little bit more self-sustainable to avoid going to the supermarkets and stuff. So I thought I would at least make a little strip of garden for them because I had some spare stuff lying around to make with it and I wanted just to show how easy it is to set up a little no-dig garden. So yeah, I did that with um, some of the cardboard that I had and horse manure and compost and worm castings and then weeds and leaves and stuff that I found around um, the property and mowed those to make the mulch. So we're not getting recycling picked up at the moment either because the recycling places have been shut down, um, risk of contamination and stuff. So it's good to use up the cardboard if you've got it. So yeah, I'll just show you that now. It's only a little strip. Um, because I didn't have that much organic at, a, at the moment. But um, yeah, it's done really well. I will show you at the end of the video what it looks like a week later. And then I went and collected all these leaves, did some weeding, and then mowed them up along with some cardboard and some grass to create like a really nice finely chopped mulch. you make a bed like this and it's got heaps of compost and manure and worm castings and things with lots of worms in it the blackbirds will go nuts on it so it pays to cover it with something so I had some shade cloth in the shed and then a couple of metal hoops left to hold it up but then I also had to make do with other things I found just to help hold it up and then in my own garden um, I focused, yeah, like I said before, on this garden because this one is a south-facing one and in New Zealand that means it does not get much sun in winter at all. So everything that I grow in here over winter I will have already planted a few months ago so that it's a big size so I can keep harvesting it from it in winter. Like the celeriac behind me that's been in here for months, it's been in here since September. And then I've got um, the Brussels sprouts as well that I'll show you that have been in at least seeds were sown in October and yeah but I'll show you that soon but the first thing I did was clear the beans from these arches so all the green waste from the beans I'm just chopping and dropping and letting it fall right down um, because I'll be using that as a organic matter for the soil And I'm also clearing out some of my tomatoes and taking in even the green ones to ripen further inside because they're just not getting sun up here to ripen. I'm leaving a few up here but the majority are coming inside. And yeah, like I said, with the green waste from the beans, I'm also doing the same with celeriac and lemon balm and the perennial herbs and anything that needs cutting back, just letting it uh, fall to compost 
right where it is. And a couple of days ago, I harvested my kumara that was up here because I just don't think it's going to get much bigger. The sun is just too limited for it to do much growing. But they haven't been a wasted crop because I have been using these green leaves all season long. They're really nice. It's like a bit like spinach, a little bit more texture than spinach, but they're really nice. So I'm not too disappointed with these. They are small, but they look great. and all these remaining leaves I am going to blanch and freeze for future meals. Then where the kumara were I just laid out some chopped lemon balm from the lemon balm bush that I chopped back. And then this soil was already full of goodness because I prepped it quite a lot back in um, summer before I put my corn in there. And even though corn is a heavy feeder there's a lot of organic matter on there so it's still really nice and I wanted to plant some shallots in there now so I just put on a really small layer of fresh compost. And then I planted my shallots. These are going to be a bit of a test because shallots would prefer full sun, which they will not get. So I'll see in spring what size they are. And then over top of this, I put on some pea straw, as well as over top of all the other green waste that I've chopped in this video. That just helps that green waste break down a little bit faster. You totally could use the green waste itself as a mulch but I wanted something really thick so that over winter I don't have to do much weeding up here because I won't be coming up here as much. The things that are in here are really big staple crops that won't need ongoing maintenance. Having mulch like that because I know I'll be asked, yes I will get slugs and snails um, but I get it from all around here anyway. We're surrounded by bush with a lot of decaying wood and places where they like to hide um, so I just come up here a couple of times a week in autumn and start doing snail hunts at night. So with a torch and my gum boots, gloves, pick them off, squash them. Does It really does deplete the numbers. So yeah, like I said, this is all like staple crops for the winter, like these Brussels sprouts. I've got a couple of pumpkins that still need to uh, mature. Got some rocket here that we're still eating from and I am letting it go to seed because I want it to, one, be there for the bees, and two, I want to collect the seeds for microgreens in winter. And then I've got the celeriac. Here are some of my brassicas from, they were planted in December. So these ones have grown a lot more than the ones above here covered with the netting. They just get that little bit more sun. And as you can see, there is definitely still sun around in other places, but just not in my garden. Now coming down to the front garden by the stairs, this is where I planted those bok choy and uh, Chinese cabbages a couple of weeks ago, and they still get a little bit of morning sun, and it's obviously really enough to make them thrive. I also sowed some green uh, cover crops here, which have all sprouted. I won't be planting anything else there over autumn and winter, so it's just gonna replenish the soil in preparation for spring. I'm really excited to harvest my yams. That won't be for a few more months, but I planted quite a few here um, by the river, which is a part that's very hard to weed and it used to just get covered in weeds. So I thought I would at least plant something there that might be a bit invasive, but at least I can eat it. So yeah, I'm probably looking to harvest them about June. I like to wait till a frost or two has uh, taken that green foliage away. And this is that little garden where I had the corn. That's just got a couple of random things in there, endive and some brassicas and some onion seedlings. And now coming to the garden that I've just set up a week ago. And you can see things have really grown already in just a week's time. So this front garden here gets the best sun in my whole property. I love it. Um, and that just is filled with a lot of random things. Carrots and lots of brassicas and still some kumara, which I will harvest in a couple of weeks time. I'll um, leave these in the ground a little bit longer, hopefully get some bigger ones. I'm letting all my lettuces go to seed so that they will self-seed. I love it when things self-seed, um, well, when you want them to anyway. I um, let my brassicas self-seed and my, yeah, my lettuces and my flowers. Got some cabbages here and some more endive. So these are the beans that I let dry on the vine and I collected them a couple of weeks ago but I just haven't had a chance to peel them. The pretty ones are the Borlotti variety and they are a great shell out bean. 
while the white ones are a Blue Lake runner bean, which are not traditionally used as a shell out bean, but I like to save like all my beans as shell out beans once we are done eating them fresh. I think they're just a little bit lacklustre in flavour, but they're, I like it. It's a nice white bean. It's great for soups and stews and just bulking out meals. And that's it for the garden. Um, so for the rest of the month I am going to keep planting out seedlings in the sunnier gardens. I have lots of mustard inside, I have some fennel, I have some more cauliflowers and broccoli coming, peas, broad beans, yeah there's plenty still to plant. Hope you're all doing okay and that you have some nature or something to get outside in because lockdown will be extremely hard if you don't. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.